Hey, Greg. You ready to go? So this is Greg McIntyre, McIntyre Elder Law, helping seniors protect their assets and legacies. The reason I ask Hayden if she's ready to go, we've been having a quite a discussion. Yeah. Hayden, should I put Purell, uh, Purell on my coffee? Not if you want them to survive the no. end of the day. I okay. think that probably would make you pretty sick. Yeah? Yeah. This should I take off my gloves? You're good. I, I feel good. I had to have my coffee this morning. That's what I wanted to do. Well, I don't this episode coffee. of the Elder Law Report is brought to you by Purell and coffee. And the makers of the nitrile gloves. Mm -hmm. And these are not, this place is immaculately clean and, and disinfected. These I just wear to try to teach myself not to touch my face because that's the prevention for every disease just about there is. So this is a special so. Elder Law Report and we're going to talk about what the current event is, which is amazing I think and unprecedented in my lifetime which is basically calling off churches my church is across the road and looking at it mm -hmm. we didn't have services today I never remember that happening never have in you, my lifetime never in your lifetime mm -hmm. has that happened never what would happen if churches decided to meet would the police come in break them up I could only speculate I probably would say that Probably they would just turn their heads and just look the other way. That's scary. Because I don't think anyone would complain. Me. I think someone would file a complaint. Right. Anyway. But, uh, you know, just wanted to talk about the current state of things. We have a nice outline for a show today. We're going to talk about the current state of things, the quarantine, and how that affects seniors. This is going to be very senior-focused, senior-centric show today. Um, and as an elder law report and elder law attorney, it should be. We're going to talk about our lobbying for an electronic principal, the person signing a will or, or a document, witness as required by statutes and notary statute that can help deal with an infectious disease or quarantine situation. We're also, I wanted to talk about, you know, how it's kind of taking away things little by little. What's next? I'm not gonna go too conspiracy oh, theory on you, but we're gonna, let's go there. Let's do it, let's have fun, okay? Well, we're and, gonna have to condense our and our, how and how can we help? What can we do? What can we do as individuals? What can we do as an elder law attorney, as an elder law firm? Uh, what can we do? So without further ado, and you know, hold on. Yeah. I'm doing? winding Hayden up, okay? And I'm just gonna <laughs> let her go. Oh no! Right? Oh, God. I've already got her wound up. We're ready to My go. My husband's not gonna watch you. No. Go. Okay. So, <laughs> so I mean, you know, wow, it's something they had to do, huh? Tell me about it. Tell us about it. I think it's do a little to save a lot. I think do that's a the little to save a lot. It. Okay. Yeah. Take a two week period, isolate people, get the uh, exponential uh, spread stopped at this level, mm -hmm. uh, identify those who have the illness, mm -hmm. and uh, just do an intervention. It's going to be a hard two week painful intervention. It's not going to be easy for anyone. I think that you, you quarantine people for two weeks, essentially. You don't, I mean, there's no official quarantine out there, no. but when you cancel, you know, meetings, meetings of over 100 people. Yeah. Meetings of a hundred or more. Yeah. Then, you know, you're, you're sending a signal certainly. And that the incubation period of this thing is five to 14 days. Mm -hmm. That's what I understand. Mm -hmm. So in two weeks, you basically flush out and identify who has it and you can individually quarantine those individuals. Mm -hmm. That's what I see coming. Mm -hmm. That's the that's my logic behind what I absolutely know nothing about, which is this disease. I only know what I'm told, but that's what I see. One of the major problems that could have That's been, what my mind deduces. Sorry. We were woefully unprepared for this. Uh, nobody really knew, nobody was expecting it, but we I don't, don't want to we... ask you to speak up, but I, I'm going to ask you to speak up. There, there's, I am a loud talker. There's a reason why in the second grade and all other grades, even if I sat in the back of the class and I was trying to whisper to you, I had this raspy voice that oh, I can hear my teacher now, Greg, be quiet. Come in front of the class. Hush up. Well, one of the reasons oh, my husband married me is because I have such a, a nice, such a soft, soft, soft voice. voice. 
And right, but I want people to be able okay. to hear right. the, the things that you have to say to me, okay? Right. Mm -hmm. So okay. I have no problem projecting my voice loudly. Ask any of my teachers or my parents who had to hear about how much of a, chat, a loud mouth chatterbox I was growing up in school. At okay. every teacher parent conference, I dreaded them. That. I oh, that. I yeah. I did too, but for different reasons. Okay. I was not achieving oh, you weren't, to mine. You are hitting your marks. No. Oh, but you're no. so smart. Amy. I tested my IQ and performed at a sure. lot of levels. I, I, I excelled in what I would like. And for those of you who don't know, Hayden has worked with me. I've had the privilege to work as a, her teammate for a long time. Mm -hmm. And Hayden, I tell people that we used to do a radio show for years. Mm -hmm. And some people, they don't know. They don't know our history yeah. and how much we've done together. Mm -hmm. I appreciate working with you. Fist bump, yeah. elbow bump. Me too. And uh, anyway, so, so, so yeah. So I enjoy things we do together. I want them to hear you, okay? so. We okay. got a great show. I think they're they're saying let's put people in a box for two weeks and see mm -hmm. and see um, who's got it mm -hmm. because of the incubation period. I think that's the strategy. Mm -hmm. If I were a CDC person, that would be my strategy. That's pretty much fine too. When it boils down to it, it's yeah. it's not fair to everybody. It's not fair to anybody. It's not going to be convenient for anybody. Under best case and worst case scenario is the best case scenario. Right. Or vice versa. Which I hope, you know, um, I, I hope that it's two weeks and we're done, right? We move on mm -hmm. and we come out of it. Mm -hmm. That's my hope. And I'm sure they're taking a let's wait and see approach to what to do next. Well, I'm going to back up to what I started to say just a minute ago and mm -hmm. make it very brief. Before I interrupt. If we had had the testing ability that mm -hmm. they have had in other countries, Korea is a great, South Korea is a great example, we could have tested people. And that would have not caused this, but years of inattention to those things created this problem. Mm -hmm. So we're learning, and we're also learning a major uh, piece of information, or we've learned that we cannot let China continue to produce our drugs. They could kill us just by refusing to give us the drugs. Talk about that. I mean, see, um, I read a statistic one time, the average seniors on X amount of mm -hmm. medications, yeah. you know, quite a few medications. And what if China decided tomorrow we're not going to ship mm -hmm. the supplies, the drugs or the ingredients for the drugs that come from us to you anymore? Yeah. Well, this has been a learning experience, but you know. I mean, you said, can I say that? that, you, that yeah, they they can kill they can kill a lot of our people oh, by yes. doing that, right? Yes. Oh. By refusing to ship the drugs. It's a scary thought. That's Hayden. exactly right. These are the things you sit around and think about. The, the uh, people complain about big pharma, but they would be put out of business by China. Right. So I take three prescription medications, blood pressure, um, cholesterol, and um, heartburn. So you, you're whatever. lobbying for pulling that, drug, uh, that manufacturing back home. Well... Oh, yes. That's what you're like. But I think, I, That's think what you're I don't think that China will ever let us. And I know they I, have the power. I think that us. it would not behoove China economically to cut off the United States from anything because we're such a big market, such a big customer. Yeah, they, but they don't have the same compassion for their citizens as, as mm. we do. Or, they, or we have more power than their citizens not do. Not at all. Yeah, so if, if all of a sudden that happens... I hope I hope we have more compassion for our citizens. Well, I, I think hope. I think we're going to move more. This stuff toward, scares me. Hey. Yeah, but we've got to move more to, toward being more independent, more independent because yeah. they also control these. Um, I wish there's a word for it. These uh, minerals and things that they make, technology, the little crystals. I don't know. There are words what for it, but anyway, this? these. Rare earth minerals, is that the word I'm, the word I'm looking for? It's things that are required to make cell phones and televisions and of technology of all kinds. No, it's things that are more esoteric. But lithium, anyway, lithium. they control those products. Yes. And you know, right. our steel is, is coming back. But we, for years, we were the most self-sufficient country on the face of the earth. We're just not as self-sufficient. We produced everything. Okay. We were the only country that was that self-sufficient. Everybody so, depended on us for so something. This, so this, this state of emergency with the quarantine. Yes. Okay. 
What do we do for two weeks? What's coming? You have some inside information? No. No? No. What, what, what are you fam- hearing? My family is kind of spread out. Norton, ordinarily, yeah. we, you know, we would hang out. We would barbecue. Being outside is a healthy way to to gather with people. Sure. Because the, the air facilitates So you would, you would, you are you would, confined. You would uh, encourage people to get outside. Sure. That's what I've been doing. Get outside. I've got a kayak. I encourage you to get outside. Access get fresh air. Yeah. Stay healthy. Nothing's better than for the immune system. Well, everybody than needs fifteen minutes a day in the sun for their D three. Sure. Or vitamin vitamin D. D. So, yeah. And, and other uh, things too. Oh, it just improves the mood. Ben Franklin used to have a thing where he would go for a mile walk through the woods a day or something. Oh, I know. Oh yeah. And, and 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 there's been studies that walking in the woods in the wilderness like can improve your mental health and creativity and clarity, all kind of things. Yeah. As opposed to simply staying. And maybe the city or, yeah. Just walking around the in the woods, in the nature, kind of nature, in nature. Go to nature. Well, just or get in the kayak, go boating. Yeah. So, all right. So, uh, you know, and you're saying, look, this thing could be bad, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think that's the information that you're gleaning. Well, we've got people who some banks have borrowed lots right. of money, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lots and are getting prepared. So it could get bad. Mm-hmm. It could get worse in two weeks. Yeah. It could explode. Well, you can right. see how much it's going to cost government, not to mention uh, small business owners and, and, and people in That's in, my concern. In, we, mm-hmm. uh, Hayden and I were really going back and forth on if you were the president and you were going to make a call to shut down the economy for a couple of weeks at least, but you knew that it was going to stem the spread of a contagious virus and identify who has it basically, right? Because you're, you're quarantining for the maximum length of the incubation period mm-hmm. of the virus. That's what they're doing. I mean, at least it matches, okay? Then, then, then would you do it, right? That's your question. You're like, yes, well, you gotta do it. Right? I could speculate on what I would yeah. do and what I wouldn't. Uh, it may be that they're not doing enough. They may be quarantining people and saying, stay home. You know, don't get out. I don't know if it's enough. Uh, a, a group of a hundred people can spread just about as far as as a group of a thousand. Yeah. You know, it's just exponential. So I don't know. I don't know if this is a waste of time or a waste of My money. My thing is, as a business owner, if you're going to shut down an entire economy and you're going to shut down my business, and I'm not just speaking for me, I'm speaking yeah. for all business owners out there, because... Yeah everybody's being heard, I don't care how big you are right Mm -hmm. now, or small, then at least you have to think about what what that means to those business owners, because the businesses drive our economy. Mm -hmm. You basically shut down an entire engine of our economy. You shut it down, but you've offered no relief. Mm -hmm. Because you gotta pay your employees on Monday. You gotta keep paying them, whether people are coming through the door or hiring you, anyway. If you're a government worker or employee, you might get two weeks vacation. But the people that are paying your salary are business owners like me. Mm-hmm. Every day. So that's gonna, that, that well is going to dry up at some point too. So if I'm making the decision, yeah, I'm not, I might lead with this is what we're going to do, but I'm quickly going to follow with, and here are some solutions for, every, you know, for everybody working hard in a capitalist society and economy to make their ends meet, feed their families, and pay their employees. It's you got to do it. It's a shame we can't say, okay, everybody, does, nobody owes anybody any money for anything for this. Oh, I period. bet you, I bet but you the you banks, I bet you that. the bank's going to still expect to be paid. No. I bet you the power company's still going to expect to be paid. Mm-hmm. So you got to pay your bills. That's the scary part of what I, what I'm looking at down the road. That's that's my biggest fear, is, well, that, is that we shut down the economy and not provided any any relief or solutions. Yeah. And, and you bet I'm looking for solutions. I wish I could skip ahead right. and, and and look back on it from the future. Because I, 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 I just touched my face. I just touched my face. I just touched my own face. But I like I like I like I don't know. I fixed my eyebrows. <laughs> what is that about? <laughs> As I've gotten older, sometimes I think they trimmed them up when I had it. Like, well, when you sometimes when I got when yeah. I get older, like when I've gotten old since I've gotten older, like I have these Einstein eyebrows, 
that'll go out and like, and the gray ones or the white ones, they go straight out. Oh yeah, they're you know? stiff. So I, I, I always want to make sure. I'm like, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Well, you 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 do a lot of touching you, your with your hair, my and hair, your and things. So. People talk, you know. Yeah. What's that about? How we how many times that's a day do we I touch our face? Off. That's why I wear these gloves. How many times a day? Oh, at night. I've Ninety heard times you've heard nine. I, I, that sounds for a lot to me, but you, that's what I, you I said, find yeah. myself doing this, and I find myself doing this. So your I, solution is just wear some gloves. Well, when I put these on and I see that blue, yeah, it, that's supposed to remind me you don't need to do this. And right. if I've got to scratch my nose, I'll do it like this. Right. Your hands are. That is the biggest source of can, contamination yeah. in the world of, right. of any communicable disease. Should we just stop touching each other? No. <laughs> just wear your touch. Should we just stop? Some people As human beings, should we, we can't touch each other anymore. That's my fears. We're going to get to some crazy place uh, well, where we just don't touch each other and we're just not even really human Things beings. are going to be back to normal. we got to get back to normal. Yeah. and it, But it might not be an idea to change the habit of handshaking. Oh, man. Uh, so, you, so you're I, the no, fist I'm not, man. I'm, I'm going to shake your, I'm always going to shake your hand. I love if you won't that. shake my hand, I'm going to be like, what? Well, well there there hand? are a few people that I have known for several years who will not handshake. I think they lean more toward those people who are a little bit OCD or yeah. one of those things. I don't know which yeah. disease does what, but but they're more concerned about germs. What yeah. do you call that? Obsessive compulsive or OCD? It could be OCD. Sure, sure. But anyway, so I know some of those who they want right. not to right. put my Well, they say your cell phone, that is, you know, this... This thing lives on your cell phone for a long time. So you clean your cell phone. Um, you, you had done some research. Um, you know, clean your cell phone. Um, you know, wash your hands. Use Perel, they said, you know, the hand sanitizer. That or vodka. One, one country put out that vodka killed it too there for a while. It doesn't. No, it doesn't? You're good? Are you good? <laughs> yeah. I, I, just, just, I, just pour a little I, bit I, out I, of your hands while you're drinking. Oh, okay. No. So, I mean, actually, never mind. Okay. No, it doesn't matter what. Point. Granny's recipe. One after Granny's recipe. Do you remember me? I remember you Granny's that. recipe. Mm -hmm. Oh, a friend of mine told, told me that Granny's recipe. Okay. I'm just kind of mouth. Anyway, let's so, get Let's get All right. So, so we want, that's the current status of things. My concern has been the lockdown, and, and rightly so. I mean, you know, you got to quarantine people who are sensitive. Our clients are sensitive to this virus more than other populations, right? You know? Yes. Um, and, and, uh, so you're quarantining community healthcare facilities like assisted living and nursing homes, quarantining those. But that the whole situation, I mean, what's next? That's my thing is what's next? Do we go to some kind of full lockdown? Do we go to martial law at some point? Ah, it scares me, it scares me. I try not to think about anything. No? Like that. Okay. I, I've the been, the American I, people I've are not. Everything that's happened so far, I have predicted. I have anticipated and predicted okay. and planned for, it, by right. the way. And I have a written plan for a quarantine situation. Our business does. Mm -hmm. But but what I'm, I can't get past, and Brenton wrote a great article that's on our site, on our blog. It is good. Look for it. About um, let's make virtual reality. Mm -hmm. And some states have um, electronic witness notary and even a principal could sign a will or power of attorney electronically yeah. we are in the 21st century is it 21st yeah 21st century okay and i can sign almost any contract i can sign contracts worth hundreds of thousands of dollars electronically electronically online right now mm -hmm. in north carolina mm -hmm. but my will i cannot sign electronically my my notary cannot sign electronically my witnesses cannot sign electronically. You guys are watching us through a video medium right now. Yeah. I could FaceTime my wife right now, real time. Mm -hmm. I could FaceTime a client in a nursing home right now. They could FaceTime me. We could do what's called a Google Hangout. We set those up all the time where multiple people can be on conferences, witnesses, notaries, the principal at the same time. And they could have in front of them a DocuSign PDF document yep. on a tablet or a computer to sign. We could, we could go through a competency test or talk about that with that individual. Now, you tell me. And you have it on video. I could go we outside just, that window right there and see you notarize. Mm -hmm. I mean, see you sign something, come in and notarize it, and that's fine under the statute. Why can't I do that through an electronic window? Right. And, and Why can't when I do we that? do that, we don't video those. 
the video is the proof, proof positive. So. Well, not just a video. I just mean a live. I can. I, you you can record those things. You could record those things for posterity. That would be amazing. It would be stronger mm -hmm. than you could require recording, That's right. even in a statue. Mm -hmm. To me, yeah, having a video of someone talking, mm -hmm. judging their competence, mm -hmm. electronically signing, would be much better proof that someone is lucid, right. has the competency to contract, to sign documents, than a closed door signing with two witnesses in another. I got a video. What you also have is because I can uh, record that interaction. Yes, electronic. is your protection of documents. It could be stored in the cloud. It's not on a piece of paper. It is on a piece of paper. So but, we already provide a service mm -hmm. free of charge for our clients for life, mm -hmm. and that is called eDocs Access. So we store electronically all documents. Yeah, it's on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you want to know what eDocs Access is, Google it or go to our website, go to our blog and search it. There's a search tool there, eDocs Access. Or go to Login. There's a Login button on the upper right on the home page or any page. It'll take you straight to that page. Our clients set up a username and password. They can log in and get, get to their estate planning documents. It's a bank level security site. Mm -hmm. And our clients love it. And their kids love it because they, they a lot of times our clients will give access to the kids. But you're right. I yeah, mean, it, it would eliminate the need to necessarily have the original to probate yeah. because the electronic version is just as good as the original. Mm -hmm. I just think the law needs to catch and up. I man. think about these catch people up. on the cruise ships and in foreign sure. countries and things, things like quarantine. that who have no access to their documents. Suppose you've got someone who needs their um, um, living will or if something. they're on vacation. Yeah, yeah, you've got it. They can get it anywhere in the and world. And the reason this is important because if you're quarantined, you're past the point of being able to sign anything because we can't get witnesses and notaries mm -hmm. into you. That's well, we're the working issue. on it. We're work, We're lobbying for that heart. We're calling, and 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 the best way to get I have worked. Done is I have call. worked on it as a on a case by case basis so far. But yeah, how do you, how do you lobby? You know, what is lobbying? Do you know anything about lobbying, Hayden? A bit. You really want to get me started. Queen of lobbying over here. So how, how does one go about affecting change like this? Making sure that if we are quarantined, if something happens, that we're able to still do things at that point. How, how can we help affect that change? What, what would you do? Call. Call whom? I would call the representatives and the senators that I know yeah. or that- Call your house rep mm -hmm. of North Carolina. Call your house rep. And your senator. And your senator. Mm -hmm. Your state house and senate reps. And you can find out who the committee members are. Sure. You, you can find a lot out just by going to the North Carolina, in our case, Agreed. represented to the uh, website for the General Assembly, and you can find out who's on what committee and what, you can find out what bills are coming up for votes. I have put a call out to other estate planning and elder law attorneys as well in North mm -hmm. Carolina to join me in lobbying their senators and, and uh, representatives uh, for an electronic notary statute. Um, I believe that the Department of Health and Human Services is willing to work on a case-by-case -case basis, but I don't have a lot of faith that that's going to really, really accomplish well, a lot with everyone. Well, but if you think about it, the uh, realtors and the banks and people like that have situations that need the same type of service. They could make have one uh, session of the General Assembly, and yeah. they could deal with both of those things at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, and the, it would be so bankers simple. want it. Bankers want it so that they can have electronic closings. Right. That's what they want. Sure. They want to streamline the closing process. Mm -hmm. They'd love to take that out of the attorney's office altogether, to be honest with you. And well, they have done that in some states. Yeah. But, but in, in your yeah. case, and in the case of a lot of other, other attorneys, we need it for mm -hmm. this purpose. Well, I'm not a real estate closing attorney, but I understand the importance of, that, of the role that they play. And it's a slowdown. It's a chance to take a look at everything involving property and keep all the title records straight, and it protects the buyer and the seller. Um, but but I still I agree. I don't see why people can't sign electronic. I don't see why why in today's age I can order all my groceries online. Why well, have the technology and yeah. not use it to make to expedite things, right? And facilitate things. So another another issue is. Let's say you mentioned, hey, well, you know, that's a big ring, Hayden. 
If you put that, <laughs> if you put that glove on, that. that ring is going to cut through that glove. I don't really. I had that turned off. I'm hey, sorry. That's fine. potential spam. It is potential spam. I wouldn't worry about it. Literally. I can't turn it off. So here's what I would do. You mentioned, Hayden, that well, what if nursing homes or assisted living facilities? That's fine. What if nursing homes or assisted living facilities allowed for witnesses and notaries mm -hmm. or hospitals, right? They had their own internal witnesses and notaries. That would solve the problem, yes. right? You said, right? But we do know that's not the case. Most nursing yeah. homes will not provide even witnesses. Most of them have witnesses and notaries there, but they won't allow you to use them. Okay, right. Because you're doing it for your own intensive purposes mm -hmm. and they want, don't want to end up having their staff and notaries subpoenaed into court and things like that over future litigation over something that but might happen. But how often does that really happen? Sometimes, every once in a while. It well, can. but it doesn't, it sounds like it would be a, a I think it could be a source of potential liability. For their clients if they would accommodate them like that. I, I think it's a source of potential liability for them. If I'm, if I'm their internal, if I'm their internal, um, legal counsel i'm going to advise them not to do it too okay okay because mm -hmm. i think there could be some burden of proof put on there to determine competence for those people too those witnesses and notaries so anyway it, that's a touchy subject but the, the my main concern with that is does this virus live on paper on surfaces if you if, if you do that and the notary brings out or how about even more threat is the paper going in from our office or from the outside world, carrying that virus into people in the nursing home or assisted living facility? How long does this virus live on surfaces? On surfaces like that, it's three days. On clothing, that's what you researched and read. Yeah. Yeah. On, on now it, it it varies. Okay. You know, it says up to three days. I saved so. my beard. You did. I, I read that it's I that. it lives on. It can live in your beard. You're more apt to get viruses and contagions if you have a beard. Okay. That's what it said. Almost every, not almost everything. Yeah. There are very, very many things that That's I. That's what the I research said. I did research of some facts for today. Right. But I watch. Um, that is my. My grandchildren are grown and mm -hmm. moved away. I've got college kids and married grandkids. Sure. And the 16 year old now has his driver's license. So I have nothing to do but watch the news. And I do. And then I have a, I have two iPads and a cell phone. And I'm constantly checking get, these get things. Off the so. Get off the merry go Get off the merry go But I don't have get another off. horse to ride. Step off the merry go round <laughs> of 24 hour news breath. digest, right? The, the, and, and, and go outside. Yeah. Breathe. Mm -hmm. Do it with me right now. <sighs> Okay, I need you, Greg. Look, look outside. It's a beautiful it is. cloud. I mean, it's kind of a cloudy day. It's a pretty day. day. Yeah. It's not a bad day. Yeah. It's a good day Go to get outside. out and walk and get your exercise. Get, the, your get those other people's D. voices out of your head yeah. and just listen to your own voice. Yeah. Be with your loved ones. But I wouldn't learn things like I do um, on... A, I look at Israel and Italy and China sure. and what their news says. I mean, Israel's I'm, really locking down on things right now, right? Yes, I was just telling Greg something that I learned last night that Israel has is using technology to monitor people who are being quarantined. They can monitor the person that's being quarantined and the people who visit them. I didn't try My to cell get, phones tracking cell phones. Yes, yeah. tracking their cell. Phones. Yeah, it's it's technology that I'm sure our government has too, mm -hmm. and I'm sure just like a lot of other things, it will be misused. But in this case, they have announced to the public, it's not a secret. Uh, but I, I learned things like that. I've learned things like, let me see, I'm putting on the glasses so I can read this. Like the crazy Corona beer thing that goes around, you know, all these uh, scams. Here's some things that, uh, an, uh, it's a website called Helpline. And they said there is no cure for COVID-19, no matter what the internet says. No teas, essential oils, tinctures, or colloidal, colloidal silver. No bleach, no cow urine. I saw this morning some people were drinking cow urine. And, yeah. and I laughed. <laughs> it's <laughs> okay. pretty hard. <laughs> oh, if you get to the my. point where you're drinking cow urine. But here, what about chiropractic adjustments? I'm just going to go ahead and... 
drink the virus before they Chiropractic come. adjustment, supplements, and no homeopathy. Am I saying that right? Homeopathy. They, and they put that in big words. They Evidently, there's some kind of treatments that are homeopathic that they say. But things like mm -hmm. that, I mean, you wouldn't believe all this stuff. But I will tell you this. I have learned a lot that there are a lot of really promising um, uh, possible cures or reductions in the virus. Korea is, is, is working on chloroquine and zinc combination. Those two things are, are beginning to show a little bit of, of promise. promise. And the United States is work, working with something called Plaquenol and um, something else called Rindosor, it, Rindos, Rindosevir or something. Gosh, I hate medical names. But anyway, there are saw, a lot of things I saw that IBM, are I saw IBM had commissioned their supercomputer to isolate molecules and things like that. And they were, it had isolated like 77 different molecules or something like that that could be effective. And, you know, I think we'll probably find a, um, a vaccination at some point, but either that or we'll just weather the storm like the last few potential pandemics or pandemics that, that have come along. And, and we'll, we'll isolate it over the next couple of weeks and we'll move on. That's we've, what I hope. We've learned a lot that this government wasn't prepared. And it's kind of like everybody knows a little bit about what's going on, but nobody knows everything. And so the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing. So we don't have enough tests. Mm -hmm. Not nearly enough tests. True. That's being remedied. But they've also developed uh, public-private partnerships, including colleges, uh, to do research on things like this. So they're learning a lot about what we need to be doing mm -hmm. and where we need we need to pull our pharmacy pharmaceutical chemicals and the sure. production of our medications back to the United States. And it's already being done on manufacturing and steel and things like this. We used to be the country, the only country that was totally self-sufficient. We did not depend on another country, country in the world. We could survive yeah. alone, uh, and that's not the case anymore. Yeah. But that's that's changing, and you know, the trade practices that's changing. A lot of things are changing, so we're learning a lot in these situations what not to do. Certainly, uh, a historical time right now. It is a historical time when we're shutting down churches and meeting and gatherings. Restricting our movement, lots of constitutional issues in and these types of things. Restricting the ability for people in quarantine to control their money and property through estate planning documents like powers of attorney. Restricting contact with relatives. Those are the sad things. And I hope that nursing homes and assisted living facilities are taking measures to promote that electronic contact and to make people feel safe in there and not panicked. Mm -hmm. I know I would be panicked if I was locked in and not knowing. Mm -hmm. And watching that 24 hour news feed mm -hmm. pumped in all the time, mm -hmm. that's scary. Right. Um, I tell people to get off that merry-go-round, I'm telling you. Step away, take a breath, and spend some time with family. As far as you know, we're concerned at McIntyre Elder Law, um, we're here. I would advise you to put these important estate planning documents in place yeah. before, uh, be, plan ahead before anything happens. I, I guess that's what I'm saying. I would urge you to plan ahead. What do you well, think? Well, that, you've been preaching this for so long. Oh, yeah. And it, a lot of our clients are now calling. Uh, Aunt Jessie is in this nursing home and she doesn't have her power of attorney, her, her financial power of attorney or her uh, uh, medical power of attorney. Sure. She doesn't have her living will or the declaration of a desire for an after death, whatever. Um, and they can't, we can't get in there to get the documents signed. So now it's too late to help Aunt Jessie. I, I, I'd and like to think that, the, the, I mean, the that. impetus has to come from Aunt Jessie, not from the family. I don't know. We recommend that the family have talks with Aunt Jessie. I recommend that Aunt Jessie have talks with the family. Yeah. But, you know, I want to make sure that this is what Aunt Jessie wants, mm -hmm. not just what the family wants, right? Of course. So, so I want to protect Aunt Jessie. I guess that's my point. So in your example. Well, mm -hmm. I was thinking more of encouraging I, talk with the parents. I, I just How, encourage. What do you want us to do? How, what, you know, right. we need you to put this in writing so there's no confusion and there's no family argument over what is being done. But I have seen before even I came to work for here, I worked at the Department of Social Services and, I, and other places, but I have seen families literally torn apart 
with anger and wanting over it. Over, one was over a teapot. I promise sure. you, it was grandma's teapot yeah. and grandma's cookbook and things like that. And all of those things can be taken care of by Aunt Jessie or grandma or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I, I, I rest easy. We're here, oh, because. Mm-hmm. The only thing I'm worried about now is I'm making uh, cookbooks, family cookbooks for my grandchildren. Sure. And I'm afraid they won't be done before I get the virus. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, Lord. I hope we don't I get mean, the virus. Well, I'm not planning on it. I'm, I'm going to kind of. I, I have these thoughts. I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been on here preaching about pre-planning, taking care of yourself, taking care of your family, and then all of a sudden, I'm going to get it, and I'm going to be on here hacking away. If I do, I promise you, I will try to document every single day. That's what I will do. But yeah. but here, here's the thing. I'm an estate planning and overlaw attorney. I'm not the only attorney at our office. Our entire office is devoted to helping you save your hard-earned money and property and navigate the legal maze of aging in America. I would I would say this. If you have any questions, call our office, 704-749-9244, or go online. We have a wealth of knowledge online on our site, mcelderlaw.com. You can speak with us right there 24 hours a day, okay? And we will help you. We will help you and your family. Yeah. If you have some, someone, go ahead. I was going to say, Sorry. with, with uh, an office in Charlotte, an office in Shelby, sure. and staff that will travel with you to make them visits. If Aunt Jesse you can't get out, yep. uh, we get travel for signings. I wrecked a car on the way back from the mountains to a signing. That actually day. happened. So, yeah, that actually happened. But anyway, there's there's no way we can accommodate you except where we're prevented by law, which is what we're trying to check. Sure, sure. We can help you if you live in the state of North Carolina. Yep. Um, so thank you so much for thing. watching Elder Law Report with Hayden Soloway, the Hayden Soloway, a force of nature. So. Coronavirus ain't got nothing on you. Okay. I mean that. I do need to say one more thing that I learned, and I think this is important. I have read where you need to take Tylenol to reduce the fever and eggs and, and not ibuprofen not no. ibuprofen or any other because they're anti-inflammatory so right. normally you would want that but in this case because your lungs are involved they do not want an anti-inflammatory involved for some reason so just remember for a painkiller or a fever reducer take tylenol and, and it doesn't have to be tylenol it can be the generic of whatever that is yeah Acetamil. and uh, but just remember that because it, it is important so that's, I think and that's stay, stay safe. Yes. And uh, wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Don't touch your face. They said if you can do those two things, you'll eliminate many, many diseases. Sure. Because that's how they do. Anyway.